Hey there guys. After some reflection, I decided that for image storage, I want to go ahead and use Google Cloud Storage. I had some debate over whether I wanted to do it locally, as I know Google Cloud Storage could cost money, although it shouldn't for the cases we're using. I hope you're all able to register and sign up wherever you live. If not, I hope you can <laughs> figure out some sort of alternative to this part, and I also hope you'll still find it useful. So today, we're going to instantiate this Google Cloud Storage client connection using a library, a Go library provided by Google Cloud. We'll then create an image repository with nothing in it right now, but we'll instantiate that. And then we will inject Cloud Storage into the image repository, and then the image repository will be required by the user repository. So we'll sign up in Google Cloud and then we'll get our dependency injection going. So I'm going to stitch into this video, a video I made about signing up for Google Cloud, which hopefully isn't too difficult. I find it much easier than, for example, Amazon Web Services. So I'll show that and we'll get back. Okay guys, just for your information, for those of you that may not have Google Cloud, I'm going to stitch this section into the recording. Uh, when I logged on with a different user than my standard user, I get this welcome screen to agree to terms of service. I'll do that. And this should instantiate a console. You also have the ability to get a $300 free trial credit. And I think what we'll be doing is within the free tier. If you go to cloud.google.com slash free, you should see that you get five gigabyte months, which I'll probably need to get a calculator out to learn how to use of cloud storage. I haven't run into any fees with my little demo apps using cloud storage. Now to be able to set up cloud storage, first you're going to need a project. And you can create a new project and I'm just gonna show you one that I'm not actually going to use, but let's go to new project. And I'll just call this my project. Yeah, the default name. I'd give yours, maybe let's call it Memorizer, as that's our application's name. Very good. And so it is creating this project. So our project has been created successfully, and then you can select it. And so that activates this Memorizer project. If you have multiple projects, you can click this drop down arrow and then choose your other projects. So in my actual account, I have several projects here. Probably the most important thing you'll need to know is how to work with cloud storage client libraries. We'll be using the Go library, of course, and we're going to end up running Go get to get this module and then to establish a connection with the instructions down here. And eventually I will show you how to set up an environment variable to get access to our cloud project. So basically, you're gonna end up downloading some credentials as a JSON file, and you can click this link here to go to create service account key page. And this will open up the last project you had open. And so this should open up Memorizer. You see we're still in Memorizer. Be careful to make sure you're using the right project. Then the instructions here say use new service account and then enter a name and then make it project owner. So new service account, let's call this demo app maybe. I'm not sure what the best name is here. And then the permissions suggested are to own the project. Project owner. So that gives you full reading and writing of this project. And then it just creates a service account ID that you can use. And then this will produce the JSON file. So you guys are going to download this file, Memorizer here. And this JSON file is what we will reference in our code base. So make sure you save this and actually save it into your project's root folder. All right, guys, you should be ready to get the client set up for Google Cloud. We'll set an environment variable so that our actual Go client knows where to look for credentials, which again are in this JSON file. 
All right, so you should have been able to, from the cloud storage client libraries page, you should have been able to get a service account key in the form of a JSON file. I'm now back in the Memorizer tutorial repository, and you can see that I have downloaded a service account.json file. Now this has the details that allow me to access the Google Cloud project I'm using for this. Make sure to go to your git ignore file, and if you don't have one, please add it. And then you want to add this file, serviceaccount.json. I have a single git ignore right now at the root of the project, so one directory above account, so I just go into account and look for serviceaccount.json. The client library or the storage client library we're using uses an environment variable to locate this serviceaccount.json file. So we need to set this environment variable, which we do in the env.dev file. And this environment variable will be of the form Google Cloud Credentials, E-F-G-H, so it goes before H, and then we'll say equals and set it as a string. However, we need to be careful. We can't just use some relative path to this service account file. We're actually going to need to get the directory that this file will be located in inside of Docker. So let's go to our Docker file that sets up this Docker container. And you can see that our application will be copied to a work directory of go source app. And we copy the files from this account directory into go source app. So that's what this copy dot dot does. Therefore, our service account file will be inside of this folder. So let's make sure to use that as our Google application credentials. So let's go back to the dev file or environment dev file. There's probably a way that you could do this as well with Docker Compose directly at the root of the project. So where is that? Here, here it is. I know there's a way to have Docker secrets that can be accessed by the various services. But for this case, I just decided to make the service account JSON file local to our account application. Okie doke, let's close this Docker stuff. We will be accessing the environment file later. I now want to install the cloud storage client library. So we can basically just copy this code here for getting that library and we can run it in our local environment. And this will also need to be installed in Docker eventually. So I will paste that. And this one takes a little while to install. So unfortunately, oh, that time it didn't. I must have it cached, but it does take a little while. Unfortunately, it's probably a bigger package than I'd like. Let's now work on instantiating this cloud storage in our data sources file in package main. To do so, Let's go to our data sources.go file. And let's scroll to the top. We'll need to define this client here in the data sources struct. So let's add a space or a new line and save. And let's see if this imports automatically. My control button always breaks, but there it is Google Cloud Storage and the client here. Let's now initialize it in the init function. We have this function to initialize all of our data sources for the application. I will scroll all the way to the bottom of this one. Let's see, just before, just before we return the data sources struct, we will just create a log to say that we're connecting to Google Cloud Storage. This needs a context.background. In fact, maybe I will add a little timeout to this to, just in case the connection lags, although I haven't had any problems with it. Okay, so I create a context and then this context will have a five second timeout. And if we get to that timeout, we'll end up canceling. Or actually, if everything succeeds, we'll cancel this context. It would be canceled automatically, I believe, if this timeout is reached. Lastly, we have this close method on the data sources that closes all of our connections with a single method call. And fortunately, we have a similar close method on all of these clients. So we'll just call d.storageClient.close and check for any errors. Very good. 
let's now get to creating the image repository. And this image repository is sitting here. So the first thing we'll need to do is create that interface definition, which will hold the expectations of our methods. At first, this will have an upload user image method. And I think I need to add a delete user image method. Before I was just deleting the record of the image in the database, but I might actually delete the image in Google Cloud this time. There's different ways to handle that. You could have some cloud function that scrapes for old images and store some metadata in there. There are a lot of options for how you want to handle your images. Maybe you want to save it for 30 days just in case the user changes their mind and says, oh, I repent and I want my image back. But, but in this application, you know, for now, we're just going to clear it from the Postgres database. And then maybe I'll add a delete user image method here. Let's go to the model layer and to interfaces. And right now, this repository is not really even going to hold anything. Do I want them in alphabetical order? I guess I don't have them in alphabetical order. But let's just add an empty image repository. And it doesn't have any expectations right now or any methods on it. Let's now create an actual repository in the repository layer. And we will call this the GC for Google Cloud. Or maybe I should call it storage. But we'll call it GC image repository dot go of course and this is package repository and let's add a struct first of all to define what this will hold so this repository will have access to that data source client that we just created and we'll also need to inject a bucket name that we want to use for storing these images and so that's kind of it's not exactly a folder but it's part of a path to find your images in Google Cloud Storage or even AWS S3. This is a common way they do it. When we do our dependency injection, we will take this name or get this name from an environment variable. And let's create a factory that will take a client and the bucket name and return an interface image repository. So anything of that type, and we'll want to return the concrete Google Cloud image repository here. And let's make sure our imports look all right. Very good. We want to have access to images inside of our user service. So let's go ahead and go to service and user service. If we scroll up to the struct definition, let's go ahead and add the image repository. Okay, here is the image repository. It will be the interface image repository. Let's add it to the config, which is used to instantiate this thing. And finally, let's copy this here as well and get the image repository passed into the config with C. And since we're instantiating the struct, let's add the trailing comma and save. And some sort of error here. I forgot a semicolon. All right. We should be ready to do the dependency injection now. Let's go ahead and go back to the environment file up here in the upper left and add a name for our bucket in Google Cloud. We'll add it maybe here and we'll call this GC bucket. And then we'll call this profile underscore images and save. So we'll load this when we do our dependency injection. Let's do that now. Let's go to injection.go right here in package main injection go. And we can go to the top where we instantiate the repository. So here we instantiate user and token repositories. Let's now load the environment variable for the image bucket. And then also the factory like these ones for instantiating an image repository. Did I name that GC image bucket? Let's see. I am named it here just GC bucket. Let's call it GC image bucket. There we go. And that is GC image bucket. This isn't used and we will use it to inject it into the user service. So let's scroll. Wow, didn't have to go very far. Here it is. Let's add an image repository of lowercase image repository. 
Hopefully we're now ready to go to our terminal, move this up a little. We're in the account directory. Let's CD up to the project root where our Docker compose file is. And hopefully we can now run Docker compose up. All right, here is our account. It appears to be up and running and we should have a log here for initializing or connecting Google Cloud Storage. Thanks for joining me again. That was more of a little setup tutorial, but next time we'll get started on uploading images. That may take a couple tutorials. We'll have to work on a gin handler for file uploads. And that could be simple, or we could add limitations to what the file size is that can be streamed from the client. I'm not an expert in that, but we'll do our best to explain how we can handle those kind of things. And then of course, we'll have to handle service and repository methods for this. So that could take two tutorials, I'm not sure, but I'll try to make it as clean and easy as possible. Also, I will try to remember to add instructions to the readme for downloading this service account JSON file if you're coming into this project later. Thanks for joining me again. Hasta pronto, que se cuiden, chao.